All right, so I had been, uh, before I had buttoned this thing back up, uh, and we begin to try to figure out the composite side of this, the composite mod, I wanted to go through the Q202, because I just don't understand the audio circuit, because in a lot of the composite mods that, uh, that you see online, people, they say they just, they say to cut that, to cut Q202. And I don't want to cut Q2. Why? I don't understand, I guess, the reasoning why you would cut that. But then again, I don't necessarily understand what its function is. So, anyhow, so we're going to go through and, and do some measurements. So, um, on this is the collector of Q202. And when I measure it, notice you get a uh, let's auto set this so we basically have a sine wave uh, I missed it where did it go we have a sine wave riding on 5 volts because we're set to uh, 2 volts peak to peak or whatever I can't see because my little camera's in the way capturing the footage um, so we have 5 volts riding on this signal if I measure this signal, uh, why is it not measuring? There we go. It's saying that it is a basically it's four four something meg. Um, so when we go to the emitter of that transistor, we essentially get the same thing. We're getting a, a sine wave with a frequency riding on a 5 volt DC rail. And notice the frequency is changing a lot, a lot more between collector and emitter. Now you see it's pretty steady there. And then when I go to the emitter, uh, we get uh, a lot of variation in frequency on that. So, so now let's uh, let's put a game in. Let's put a game in, and we will do it again. So I'll turn the game on. I will start the game. And I will measure uh, on the collector and notice it's still the same. When I go to the other side, uh, it's still the same. But if we back up to the to this resistor right here, or to whatever it is, uh, that's that should be the same signal right but then on the other side of that <clears throat> we get a completely different waveform yeah so on this capacitor you can tell it's the the, the waveform is different on this capacitor as compared to you know it goes from square wave on this side to almost like a sawtooth wave on this side but then on the other side where it's in line with that transistor it's a it's a sine wave so here's what I'm thinking I'm thinking Q202 uh, and then one other point I'll make to this is if I measure DC bias um, DC bias on the on this uh, is 5 volts on the base five volts on the collector and five volts on the emitter right that's my DC bias on that chip but if I measure the base with my probe 
No, notice how on the emitter and the collector I get that, but on the base I get that. I get just a straight DC uh, line. So here's my conclusion. My conclusion is that my conclusion is that this, these two inductors and in the circuitry in this area are essentially. Uh, it's essentially creating an oscillation circuit, I guess. Because I don't think that 4.5 meg comes from anywhere else. I think it's originated with this, uh, with Q202. And so, um, I think what happens is, is you have your, your audio coming from your TIA, uh, and, it, and as it gets to you, to uh, as it gets to this point on the circuit here, it is still the digital wave that that was output from the the TIA. It's just been filtered and shaped. I don't know if there's a such thing as wave shaping, but it looks like the the wave has been shaped to a different waveform, and then when it comes to the other side of this resistor, since this resistor is a direct short to the emitter of Q202, I think at that point it mixes the audio signal coming from the TIA, it mixes it into the 4.5 megahertz signal that you find on the oscillator. Because if I've got 5 volts DC on the base, an emitter uh, is tied to ground through one of these resistors, I don't know that it's amplifying. It didn't look like it was amplifying the signal. It looked like it was, uh, it just looked like it was mixing the signal with that sine wave. And then obviously that would be felt uh, into your modulator uh, to further be modulated onto uh, whatever frequency is outputting to a TV for channel two or channel three. So anyhow, that's that's my thought. So I don't know why you just can't take the audio signal. Instead of cutting this whole circuit out, why could you just not take the audio signal from like right here on this resistor before it's mixed? If I tap the audio signal here and depending on what because it's not as if it's not let's go into the microscope and check the circuitry so we know that q202 is there we know that the base is tied to this resistor the emitter is obviously tied to to that resistor we were talking about earlier so from there it would go it also goes to um, one of these capacitors it goes through a capacitor and then through a and through a resistor let me let me try to pull up the uh, so I can figure it out so it goes through C211 which where is C211 oh C211 was this one right here and then it goes to uh, R216. That's R210. It goes to R216. Where is R216 at? Oh, it's right there. There we go. Okay, I remember now. I remember. So, so yeah, that signal that's being allegedly, I'll, I'll use that term, mixed with the... 4.5 meg coming from the collector of Q202 it then winds up over here uh, as a mixed signal so you should expect to see the same signal here as you do on that resistor that we were looking at earlier so if I, if I probe right here 
Oh, I got the I got the console off. So let's see what it looks like here without. Yeah, it's just a, a sine wave. But if I put a game in, yeah. So it's oh, let me let me start the game. See if we can see anything crazy happen. We can't. We can't because we're talking about a pretty low frequency uh, audio being modulated onto a, a 4.5 uh, megahertz signal. So then if we come to the other side, notice how it decreases the amplitude of the, the sine wave. Uh, you guys can't see. Let me see if I can angle this sucker. It, it decreases the amplitude. Watch, watch right now. So it's, it's riding. The top of the sine wave is sitting at 5 volts DC. And then if we come to the other side, it's like now 3 point something. Uh, and then when it goes through this resistor, at this point it's it's like it's mixed with everything else it's mixed with luma it's mixed with chroma it's mixed with the sink so so yeah so that's what i'm trying to determine is if why would i need to cut out q202 let me tighten up my ring light here uh, why would I need to tighten or why would I need to cut Q202 when I could just simply take the signal at R209 because remember at this point at R209 it is just a a normal it's just audio you know and I don't, I don't have the time set to you so that you can see the ups and downs, but you can see the signal bouncing around. So yeah, so I would just presume that you could leave Q202 in and just take your signal from right here. And, and now you may need to amplify that signal. You may need to amplify the signal. I'm not sure. But I've got breadboard coming. Or not breadboard. I don't know what that stuff's called where I can like make a little circuit using different components so I, I think I'll just uh, I'll upload this video that way uh, when that gets here we can actually play around with it and see if we can't get audio from this point right here without amplification because I don't know I mean it's I've got it the DC and I don't know how let's see here if I put this here and I turn my time down. So can I measure this? Can I, like, how do you measure this? Yeah, so notice how the frequency changes from like 30.12 hertz to, to 210 hertz. It's, well, that was, a, that was an indication of something. So that's 58, 29, 45, 172. So those those all fall within what audio and I don't I don't know. I know for radios when I used to in the Marine Corps, you know, we were always taught thirty hertz to three K. That was that was audio, you know. So if you wanted to troubleshoot a radio, you would inject one K hertz and then you would look for that one K hertz on your frequency modulated output, you know. So uh, so yeah, I think this falls within audio. So it's audio at that point, just strictly audio, and then it gets mixed with a 4.5 megahertz carrier uh, prior to being modulated onto um, an RF carrier to be sent to your TV. So I think that's what's going on. So I don't think we have to cut out anything. I think we can just take the audio right there from that resistor. And we may have to amplify it, but or we may have to get the DC component down to a certain amount. I don't know what the I'll, I'll have to look up the uh, you know like what the max input for a TV video is if it's if it's you know one volt 
then we'll have to we would have to uh, step that step that down to accommodate that if it needs to be larger then we would have to um, but I had it on two volts DC two volts uh, D or we may have to just uh, put a put a uh, a decoupling capacitor, right? Isn't that what that's called? Where you want to take the DC component off of the AC waveform, you put a capacitor there, and that and that does that. Um, so yeah. So anyhow, so yeah, I think I'll upload this video. Uh, put the Atari back together. That's way it, that way I can work on other things, and then um, yeah, and then we'll explore once I get all that breadboard and all that kind of stuff in. Yeah. All right, man. So y'all be wonderful.